We just finished running a multi-million dollar affiliate launch. Now, this was the first one, in fact, that wasn't run entirely by me, but rather by our agency. And, and there are just a ton of lessons to share that you can apply to your affiliate program. So let's dive right in. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Now let's get started. So I'm super excited about today's episode because it's the very first time that I get to interview one of our affiliate managers. Not really an interview, more like a, a behind the scenes look as we recap a recent affiliate launch that we ran. One of the biggest launches that you'll see on the internet marketing calendar in 2022. And we have some lessons that we want to share with you. Now, there's a combination of things today. There's some things where it's like, hey, these are things we did that we, we knew we were going to do and we knew they were going to work and they did work. There's some things where it's like, we did these, we weren't sure if they were going to work and they did. There's some things that we did and they didn't work and there's yeah, all kinds of stuff, right? And there's, there's like 10 or 11 very valuable lessons that we're going to share in this episode, I, I'm going to be joined today by Jason Alberti, who's one of our new affiliate managers. Many of you probably know by now, we started an agency this year. Prior to this year, it was mostly me running the affiliate programs, and it was our team supporting me. This year, we've actually shifted a lot of the burden, and it's allowed us to grow and to help more entrepreneurs, which has been something that I've wanted to do for years and just haven't gotten around to because it kind of been busy. And so it's just, it's been awesome. And it's been such an experience. Jason's been a rock star. So this is the first one of these that we've done where we actually get to bring him on. And like I said, we're discussing what worked, what didn't work. We use a format in our company that we don't use on the podcast because it doesn't quite work as well. But we use the KISS method, which is keep, improve, stop, and start. Keep, improve, start, and stop, actually. So what are the things we're going to keep? What are the things that we're going to improve? what things we're going to start doing and what things that we're going to just not do that anymore because they ain't working. And if we feel like in, in our recaps, as we debrief these you know big affiliate launches, it keeps us from just going, well, that didn't work and this went wrong and they just end up being really depressing. Or they, it's like, well, we hit our goal. Yay, everything went perfect. We don't need to talk about anything. You know, it's like, no, there's always got to be something we're going to keep, something we're going to improve, something we're going to stop and something we're going to start. You know, that has to be that way is the way that we do those. But in this one, we're just going to share some lessons. Again, combination of lessons, things that we tried and didn't work, things that we tried and did work, things that we just discovered. You know, there's one in here where it's like, we just kind of discovered this one thing, this thing by accident, you know, and oh my gosh, it worked and it saved us a ton of time. So yay. So hope you enjoy it. Let's dive right in. Jason, welcome to the first of hopefully many uh, times that you're going to be on the show here, man. Thanks for being yes. on. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Yeah. So first time that we've ever had somebody from our new agency being on the podcast, like I said, first of many, because we're probably going to do these periodically where we recap the lessons that we learn from you know a multi-million dollar, I mean, one of the biggest affiliate launches of the entire calendar year. So I know we were talking beforehand, we've got some notes, you know, things that we want to share. These are for those of you who are new to these recaps, you know we've done them before, but these are effectively kind of like uh, you're getting a seat at the table in us recapping, okay, here are the things that we've learned. Here are the things that we did that went well, whether they be new, whether they be things that were just reinforced, like our first one that we'll talk about here in a second, or whether they are mistakes that we made, you know, lessons we learned the hard way. The cool thing for you guys is you're getting all the information. So those mistakes, you don't have to make them. The good stuff you can put right into your playbook. So we're going to dive right in. I think, as I see in my notes here, Jason, we got 11 things that we want to talk about. So lots to cover. So we'll start at the beginning, which is always a good place to start. I'll share my lesson first. We'll kind of alternate from there. But I feel like one of the most important things that I got out of this launch that I've known for years, I've been preaching it for years, I've been changing the opinions of some of the OGs in online marketing, but I was reminded of it again because they made the launch. The importance of small affiliates, guys. I'm going to share these stats. Let me pull open 
some stats here. In in this particular affiliate launch that we're talking about, we had 159 affiliates with one sale. 159 affiliates who made a sale. Guys, there are affiliate programs, there are affiliate launches that don't have 159 affiliates. I mean, that's the reality. So we had, you know, roughly, let me do the quick math, 27 to 30% of all sales came from first time affiliates, meaning this is the very first time that they'd ever promoted anything ever as an affiliate. That is $750,000 and change from affiliates, almost three quarters of a million dollars. Now, if you extrapolate that to a year, what those people are going to bring in over a year, upsells and things like that, over a million dollars, a couple of million dollars in sales from first time ever affiliates. As far as the number that made their first ever sale of this product, well, it's in excess of that. We haven't even run the numbers yet, but it's probably in excess of 450, 500, where it's the first time they ever sold you know, this product. Guys, that's what we're talking about when we say building an army, not discounting someone just because they're only gonna make one or two or three sales. Not discounting somebody because they only have a thousand Facebook fans. Not discounting somebody because their email list is only 800 people. We'll talk about this, but guys, we know what can happen when you when you have an eager and engaged affiliate reaching out to individuals, they can close a really high percentage. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So just reminding you the importance of small affiliates. Go get the report, your first 100 affiliates, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash first 100 FIRST 100. Go get the report and go get affiliates. They don't have to be whales to go get them. We'll put that link in the show notes. Jason, you've got a good one here. I'm looking at our notes. This is big. This is like a game changer right here. So tell us about it. Yeah, this is huge. One of the things that we did was uh, we gave all of our affiliates like a targeted hot leads list based on cart abandons, people who saw certain pages, things like that. So we were able to give them you know, these hot leads where they were able to kind of have the email addresses and they can go out there and, and close them. They can send them DMs. They can send them a personalized email or video message or something to help close those sales. And, and, and it worked. It was very effective. We had one person, she had, I think, somewhere between like nine or 10 hot leads eight, and she closed like eight, seven or eight, eight of them. Eight and she closed five. Yeah, eight and close five. That's what I'm talking about. Like what I was just saying, the importance of, you know, when when people do one-on-one communication, that's eight people. Now that's eight of hundreds, but still, what if you had a list of eight people? If you closed five of them, would you be like, nah, we don't want those five sales. It's only, that's only $10,000. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, go on. I just, the stat is just insane. It's an amazing stat. And then, we saw that across the board. I mean, I had multiple affiliates that reached out that said, hey, I had two of them. One of them already bought and I closed the other. Different affiliates were reaching out and saying, man, that really helped. And they were able to kind of get in and, and again, make that personal touch, be able to connect with those, those sales. You know, a lot of these people, they're on the fence and they're going through everything in their head. Like, should I get this? Should I not? And sometimes all it takes is somebody who can come out and say, hey, this is why you should do this, or this is why it fits for you specifically. And it just gets them to pull the trigger. So that hot leads this was awesome. Yeah. And just to rehab, I mean, literally what we do is on the last day, and this is something we can improve. This is a lesson that we learn, is improving the process for identifying the hot leads, but also, you know, the timing in which we get them. Cause I think we got them. You know, this is one of those things where it was like, oh my gosh, we need to do this. And it was 1230. And by the time we got it done, it was like 330. Getting that to them a little bit earlier in the day, you know, on cart close day, possibly running that list, you know, first thing in the morning and getting it to them would certainly improve the process. But just kind of nailing down that process and tags. So what we did was it was like, oh, shoot, we should do this. I'm like, well, what tags would work? And we were like, well, cart abandons. It was like cart abandons and one other. And so what are those things that would trigger somebody to be identified as a hot lead? When I think of a hot lead... I'm looking for the top 2%. Now, yeah, that means if somebody has only 200 leads, it might be four people. We had people getting one. I remember specifically, I think it was Brenda, we sent her two. She closed both of them. So, hey, two people, closed both. I mean, like I'm handing you 
a better than 50% chance of closing a lead, you're not going to argue if it's only one or four. So you're looking for that top 2%. Now, if it's 2.75%, that's fine. Some people might only have 150 leads, and, but they have 13 hot leads. That's fine too. You know, it just kind of depends. So for us, you know, we're looking at card abandons. So you should be tagging card abandons. If you are tagging card abandons, tell them who their card abandons are. If that's all you gave them, great. These are people who literally, they went all the way to the point where they, they have one last step and then they left. So they're being retargeted and then you're following up with them. People who clicked two or more times to the sales page. We talk about identifying those people on your end as an affiliate, but what about on the end of the affiliate manager identifying who the hot leads are, people who've clicked the sales page two or more times and sending those to your affiliates. If you have a sneak peek page, maybe it's people who click the sneak peek page. In this particular launch, you know, we had three workshop days plus a webinar. What if somebody clicked to all four or they clicked to three plus the sales page? So basically what we're saying is if they clicked to of the five things they can click, if they clicked on four or more, they're a hot lead. Four more times plus a card abandon. So just I think one of the things that we can improve, Jason, and I know we've talked about this already, but like nailing that down months in advance or weeks in advance so that it's there for us and like, okay, you know, if we run the numbers as we're going along, it's like, okay, this is adding up to 10%. Well, then we need to back it down. But it, that's something we can work on. But just, you know, if you're running an affiliate launch, who are those hot leads? Nail those down. And then talking about starting earlier, uh, I mean, really everything should start earlier in terms of trainings, in terms of obviously we're already reaching out to, you know, we're starting reaching out to affiliates right after the launch ends. Um, yeah. You're in advance. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there is no time that's too early for that. But, uh, you know, even starting with the training, we, I mean, we've got so much knowledge and, and so much things that work that doing one or two trainings isn't going to cover. Them. So yeah. being able to start those trainings earlier and, you know, having them ongoing, what that also does is it allows people new affiliates that join, they already have a handful of videos that they can start and watch in advance. So we're already creating basically a training course for affiliates as they're going through the launch that's specific to the launch that we're running. So really just being able to start months in advance and making sure that we you know get the right information to them as early as possible. And it also helps build in that buying, right? You know, as they're going week to week and they're learning new stuff and they're going through the videos, they're getting excited. So they're getting excited about the launch. They're getting excited about promoting and they're just being more invested. They got more skin in the game. They've invested their time and uh, they're just a lot more able to get better results because they're in. Yeah. I think it's important. Like we're not talking about the recruiting side. Like we're doing that a year in advance. But what we did was we focus, and this is important. We focused for 10 months on recruiting and then two months on serving. Go eight and four. You know, it doesn't need to be like six and six, go eight. And and there's an overlap. Like the training that we'll start doing next year for this launch, we'll start four months out for maybe four and a half months out. We're not going to start nine months out, but we'll start a good solid four, four and a half months out. And it'll be a slower move. Like we did those, you know, I know you want to talk about this in a second. We'll, We'll do the weekly strategy calls. What if we did more of like an every other week strategy call? and really allowed them to actually think about things. And it wasn't such a commitment or even um, maybe we could, I don't know, we can figure some stuff out. Like maybe we do, you know, two topics at once and we just do a monthly strategy call. That could be an option. But things like, you know, that was just something we realized, like planning your bonus. We only did that like three weeks before Open Cart this year. That's a pretty, you know, it was like four weeks. I think it was four weeks. But still, that's only four weeks before Open Cart. If we did that two months before Open Cart, that's an entire other month for them to prepare their bonus. And I think we would have just had slightly better results. I think we would have had people more fired up. I think even like, you know, we'll talk about the engagement in the Facebook group, but one of the things there is starting to get that engagement months earlier seeds the group. And if you know how Facebook works from an algorithm standpoint, like the more active your group is in February, 
the more active it's going to be in April when you need it to be active, just from an algorithm standpoint, let alone a human behavior standpoint. And so doing more months and months in advance, I don't think you have to do it. You know, you don't have to be like in June going, who's excited for the launch next April? Woo! I think that's a little bit overkill. But starting four months out instead of two months out, definitely something we're going to work on for next year. All right. So that was uh, start early. Um, oh, we talked about the importance of small affiliates. The counter to that is the importance of big affiliates. And this is something we are putting in place with our company. We haven't done a great job of this systematically. Okay. We've done it. We've just done it kind of as we've done it instead of like, no, we're creating a system around this that's replicatable. So now with our next launch, what we're doing is the result of something we learned in this launch. I'm going to give you the result and then kind of how we got there is we basically will have our top 25 to 40 affiliates projected. And then we'll have everybody else. The everybody else is more mass communication. We are not creating specific promotion plans for them. We're not tracking their individual stats. The reality is like somebody who we've set a goal of 3,250 leads and they're tracking towards 2,100, that's a problem. Somebody who we we like, they're probably going to do 40 leads and they're tracking towards 31. Eh, what am I going to do with that? You know, like, hey, you're really falling nine leads short there, buddy. You should send like an email to 10 people. There's not much we can do. And so we're not, we're just not going to worry about the individual stats. We're going to work on that on a macro level. It could be 15, could be 30, could be 35, 40, whatever. We're going to work with them on a micro level, one-to-one. And so that one-to-one communication earlier, we did a lot of it right when we got to the launch. Doing that more, again, everything going up three months, those six weeks leading up to the launch, really focusing on one-on-one communication, making sure that once a week, you know, we're doing what we're doing. We're DMing them. You know, we're sending them a one-off email. We're texting and we're getting on a call with them, just checking in with them. That's super important. That's something we're, we're working with a new software that we'll talk more about. I've got a, some cool episodes coming up. We're going to talk about this software. And one of the things that we'll be able to do, Jason, with that software is use that to track those things, to be able to actually make sure that every week we're engaging one-on-one with those people, not waiting until the week before the launch, the week of the launch. And now we're, we're like, oh, we see that they're behind and we're DMing them. No, like we're working with them one-on-one for weeks and weeks leading up to it. That's going to be a, a big change. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that works because what little that we were able to do this year worked well. Just uh, seeing you be able to do that full bore next year is going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited for that software and getting to kind of dive into that more. Yeah. I touched on this a little bit ago and we'll come over to, uh, I want to talk about the leaderboard thing here in a little bit, but we touched on this a little bit for just a moment, the, the strategy calls. That's something that you wrote down is, is something to talk about. So tell us about those real quick. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, we got a lot of good feedback on the strategy calls on just how, you know, we gave them worksheets. We gave them obviously the training. We gave them things that they can work on and, and, and stuff that has worked in the past for other launches and even in this launch last year and, and years before. So we gave them just a ton of really good information and, and actionable items that they can physically do not only on the strategy calls, but kind of moving forward. And it really gave them a bunch of ideas and we had really good conversations, even on the, the specific calls with different affiliates that, you know, Hey, I tried this last year. I tried that last year and it worked really oh, well. Awesome. So we had, we had a lot of really good conversations. And, and so we got a lot of really great feedback from the affiliates, not only on the stuff that we were teaching and the stuff that Matt was talking about that he's worked on throughout this process of being an affiliate manager, but also from other affiliates that said, hey, you know, I tried this last year, I tried that, this worked really well. And and even the support was great. So, you know, you, you get a couple of people that are like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm really nervous. This is my first launch. I don't know what to do. Oh, that was awesome, yeah. And you get so many other affiliates that are experienced and know what they're doing there saying, no, you got this. And just, just the support on those calls. And, and, and I know for a fact that some of the people that might've been hesitant or, you know, unsure about what they wanted to do said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And it was because of the support of the other affiliates. And they got a couple of sales. They got their first sales. They've got, you know, multiple sales 
and just, you know, seeing the emails come in that said, hey, those strategy calls were awesome. You know, I got my first sale ever in the affiliate online world. And it was because of the stuff that I learned on those calls and the support that I got from the other affiliates. It was huge. It was, it was yeah. absolutely paramount. I love those. That's something we started doing last year for the first time. And, and so I'm going to walk people through how we do those. But just one of the things that I was really surprised about before I walk people through how we do them is who showed up. First of all, it was a lot of the people who ended up in the top 10 in the top 20. But it was also a lot of people like the number two affiliate. I'll just call him out. Paul Pruitt, the number two affiliate was on almost every strategy call. And the number five affiliate, fourth, fifth, somewhere in there, fourth or fifth, on every single strategy call. In fact, let me pull up up the leaderboard. I'm going to just see because I can tell you real quick who was on there. The point is like, these are people who were on last year. And I even said, I was like, why are you on here? You were on these us. You already know all this stuff. And they're like, no, I might learn something. I might learn one thing that makes this worth 30 minutes of, of my time. So I'm just looking like the number two affiliate, number four affiliate, the number 10 affiliate, the number 11 affiliate, the number 12 affiliate, the number 13 affiliate. One of the guys from the 15th was a team, 15th, 16th. I mean, right there. I mean, what is that? Half roughly of the top 20, I'm talking we're on every single call. Another few were on all but like one or two. And so what these end up taking on is I come on and there's a specific topic we're going to cover. So how to promote the workshop, how to promote the webinar, how to close sales, how to create bonus packages, how to promote this, how to warm up your audience, how to, you know, whatever it might be, how to email more. There's a specific topic and I'll teach on that for 20 to 40 minutes. And answer questions as we're going. But there's a specific topic, a theme, and a call to action. Like, work on your bonuses. Fill out the bonus worksheet. We, we create these very simple worksheets. I hate to say this, but between us girls on this podcast, those worksheets take me 10 minutes to put together. They are not revolutionary. But people are blown away by them because there's something that walks them through. There's a one where it's like how to put together a bonus package. And there's a bonus page template where it shows you how to put together a bonus page, like your bonus package page. A template is just, I mean, it took me like five minutes to do that. And it's based on our template. I literally took our template and said, actually, I didn't do it. But I said, take this page that's our template for creating a bonus page from ClickFunnels and put it on a pretty thing over here. And I think Robbie did it, you know, last year. So it ends up being this really cool brainstorming session where you can tap into, like as an affiliate, you have access to the number two affiliate, the number four affiliate. You have access to last year's number two, affi- you know, the one who finished number two last year. You have access to me who has promoted this thing before and finished really well. But I'm saying you have access to all this knowledge and it becomes a crowdsourced thing. And so people are in there going, hey, what do you think of this bonus? And people are saying, no, you can't do this, do this, or I love it for this reason. How valuable is that? Like, instead of trying to figure this out on your own or just having me be the one who's like, well, I think it's good for this reason, but here's what I would do. And that's, there's value in that. You get access to 40 or 50 people who are like tearing apart the little details of it or adding little things to it to make it better people were blown away. And then, but one, you mentioned this, but there was a lady on there who was really, really nervous about interviewing someone. And it was, she's just like, you know, I'm so like, I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. And I said a few things, but then people jumped on, you know, this is not a webinar, so they can just, you know, jump on. We're all together in a meeting. Most of us have our camera on and there's audio and, and they're like, Hey, you know, I was in the same boat last year, but here's what I did. And by the end of it, she was like, I can't wait for my interview. I'm so excited. And that's what we're looking for, though. So yeah, those strategy calls are, are huge. Again, big changes. We're going to start doing those. Probably do like two more of them. I think we did six this year, five or six. I can't remember. Last year, we did, I think, eight. And we condensed them. I think we'll go back to the what we did before, the same number that we did last time, but move them up and, and figure that out. So we did them on Tuesdays at two. So if you can find an angle like that where... I think that's pretty much the only day of the week that that works. Thursdays at three doesn't really roll as much. So we did them on Tuesdays at two because they were easy to remember. Also, it was like the only consistent hour I had on my calendar. (laughs) All right. I think one of the things we did really well was how we hyped 
the leaderboard with two of the people on there who were back and forth, number two and number, they were in a just like epic battle, right? And I am not joking. There were times where we knew that one of them was moving up and had just, you know, emailed. And we were like refreshing the stats to try to catch it when they were tied. And so we'd screenshot and be like, oh my gosh, you guys are tied. And I remember specifically with 22 minutes left in the leads contest, this is a two weeks long leads contest. Actually, technically it started even sooner. So weeks long, he was 22 leads ahead with 22 minutes left. And she ended up winning by 10. She sent a final message and was able to get you know some registrations for the webinar. And I just thought that was like, that was the coolest thing. You know, like you're 22 ahead and then all of a sudden you, you lose by 10. Pretty cool. That's how close they were. And every time they were back and forth, like we would play it up and we were DMing them screenshots and, you know, and things like that. And uh, they ended up connecting, which is kind of cool, you know? So there might be something there, but yeah, I, li- I liked how we both kind of played that, <laughs> played that pretty well. Yeah, that was fun. It was yeah. uh, really cool to see all that work out. Yep. Here's a little thing we did. I want to talk about the Google Calendar invites that you brought up. This was a very small thing. So if we haven't said it yet, I've kind of skirted around it. You know, we're talking about Stu McLaren's launch for the membership experience. And when Stu was live and he was live for about 13 hours total, this is just in the pre-launch. We're not even talking about during the open car, but in the pre-launch, he was live for about 13 hours, I think. One of the things that happened last year was one of the affiliates, Tracy Harris, she had said, hey, you know, her brand is Mums with Hustle. She's from Australia, so they're called Mums. Mums are what we put on our front porch in October, but whatever. So Mums with Hustle. So hashtag Mums with Hustle. And Stu happened to catch and he's like, oh, look at all you see all the Mums with Hustle. Hey, Tracy's people. And we're like, we should do that this year. I think this was Stu's idea, actually. Like, can we get a list of these to call out? And I'm just going to pull up in this list. We ended up with a list. We just sent an email out and a Facebook message saying, hey, if you've got a hashtag that you're going to tell people to drop in the chat, give us the spreadsheet so we can be looking for those. The team can be looking specifically for these. Pass that on to Stu and he can call you out and he'll know the name. Because like, you know, for one of them, for example, is Coaching Hive, Mora Hanna. He might not know who hashtag Coaching Hive is. And he sees that and he's like, I don't have a context for that. So he's just like, oh, hashtag Coaching But instead, he's like, whoa, shout out to all of Mora Hannah's people. You know, that's just, it's a small micro commitment from the affiliate because they fill out the form. Now they have to tell their audience to do that. And then what happens? So that's the value there. But then when he says, let me just find another one you know, hashtag Tom Woods peeps for Tom Woods, hashtag Tom Woods peeps. Shout out to all the, you know, the Tom Woods peeps. I see you. Tom Woods is like, oh yeah, Stu said my name. That's awesome. And it's just like, it's even more likely that one of those people is going to buy. Hashtag best dog mom, hashtag no limits triathlon, hashtag, you know, expansive artists, Monkey Pod Worldwide. I'm hoping that's a podcast, not like some sort of a thing, capsule where you keep monkeys, Greg. Actually, I think I know Greg's listen. I will listen to this too. Yeah, I mean, all of these, right? Hashtag Playmaker Society, Confidence Performance, Membership Talk with Gina. Like it allowed him to call them out on the live. And then, you know, of course, you know that, like there's that feeling like, that's me. I'm in that group. I'm in that tribe. And so that's a dopamine hit, right? And we know all of these things play. Is that the one reason why somebody bought? Probably not. But did it move somebody one yard closer, this little thing, one yard closer to a buying decision? You bet it did. It moved 50, 100 people and made the affiliates feel really special. So that's a win-win if you ask me. Any thoughts on that, bud? Yeah, I I mean, I thought it was really awesome to see. And again, it builds that sense of community for everybody, right? So you, not only are you, connecting with your other members of your community on a live event, but then you've got Stu calling out your community and you feel yeah. included. And then and that's ultimately what people want. They want to be a part of something big and they want to feel included. And yeah, that was huge to kind of help move that needle for sure. Yep. Very cool. You've got a good one here, bud. 
Yeah, one of the things that we did, uh, and Matt came out of it, came up with the idea. He said, you know, we need to come out and we need to send a calendar invite to everybody that's an affiliate so that they can come on these strategy calls. And so we did. So we just went into Google, set up a calendar invite, and, you know, they sent the email to, to all the affiliates that we had on our list, and they got a really good response. We saw a lot more people come on to the strategy calls this About year. Twice as many, yeah. Yeah, than last year. Yeah, it's so, crazy. I mean, we just got a lot more people showing up to the calls and that helped create and foster that environment where people can be more supportive and communicate and all those kind of things. The lesson here was that when we initially send the first couple out, apparently Google sets up this Google Meets thing and automatically attaches it to all of the... Uh, the I think they've removed that since we talked about it. I've noticed in the last few, they haven't added it automatically, thank you. Oh, okay. I yeah, so they were complained enough, yeah. Yeah, they were they were adding them on. So that was one of the lessons that we we saw. We were like, okay, because we, people were getting confused. They were like, hey, we were on the, the Google Meets and there were like 10 other people here and nobody showed up. And so we kind of looked into it and we're like, oh, because it automatically adds that, hey, join the Google Meet here. So we had to just take that as a lesson to make sure that we remove it. I mean, we had the Zoom link in there and we had everything in there that communicated it to them. But that one thing that said, hey, join here, it's, it's a button that they pressed. So uh, just making sure that we removed that yeah. was a lesson kind of in that. Uh, great point. And I think one of the other lessons we learned was how easy it is to add all 800 affiliates to a calendar invite. Yeah. And so very simple. Uh, if you've got a spreadsheet of all of your affiliates and you got their first name, their last name, their email, their affiliate ID, anything like that, just create another column that's their email address plus a comma. And then you drag it down, paste them in the invite field. It'll invite every single one of them. The one thing you have to do is make sure the last one that you add doesn't have a comma. Uh, That's the only thing that has to keep updating. But yeah, I mean, it's a super easy way to add everybody. Because I think the first one, I was literally, we didn't know that. And we literally, you know, one of our VAs was like, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And then he was like, wait a minute. I wonder if I try, and he tried it. And he tried like two and it added both. Like, duh, that's such a big duh. You would think that would be so obvious. But yeah, so it really, um, it's super easy. I mean, it takes two seconds to drag and drop or drag and copy and then invite all of them. And again, it just puts it in their calendar. They can decline it. That's fine. But it's just one more way of getting in front of them. And like I said, we ended up with twice as many people. One of the things I'm going to experiment with, this is something we're going to do in a, in a launch coming up. I'm... I'm a little hesitant on it, but we'll see, is having calendar invites for you know big things that they committed to do. So like send final email about webinar and having an individual calendar invite to that affiliate. We'll see. I don't know. I'm going to try it with a few people this year and see how it works. Might not be good. All right. One other big lesson. We got two more for you. <laughs> how important the engagement in your Facebook group is or whatever group, whether you're using a Slack group, a Facebook group, a Telegram group, doesn't matter. But again, going back to like the strategy calls, the group was so supportive of each other that it just became its own driver of sales. And I found that if we just got the conversation started, whether it be a leaderboard or a tip or some sort of an update or like even the things we posted where it was like, you know, I I posted some stuff like, some silly stuff like, you know, who's excited about the, you know, the workshop tomorrow? And, you know, 30 people are like, me, me, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, little things like that. I can't remember. There was one that I did that was like really silly and it ended up, I have to go back and look, but it ended up getting a really good response. I mean, it was just something I just posted randomly, you know, it wasn't like a big thing, but it got that engagement. And again, people supporting each other, it facilitated conversation, it facilitated questions. We have to remember like, Questions from your affiliates are a good thing because they aren't asking questions if they aren't getting ready to do something. They need clarification on something. It's because they're trying to move up. They're trying to get more sales, trying to get more leads. So anything that you can do just to facilitate conversation, questions, engagement is a win. Yeah, definitely. All right, bud. So our last big takeaway or lesson here is something you brought up and uh, we'll end with this one. Yeah, the importance of having a team. And it can be one person, it can be multiple people, but I saw it a couple of times throughout this launch. There were a couple of hiccups on Stu's end, and this team just managed it really well. Just having, yeah. having you know, 
the people and the resources to be able to kind of take care of any issues that come up so it seems seamless. Like nobody even notices it. Nobody even realizes that it's going on. And the benefit also, you know, on the affiliate management side for us was just having that other person to just kind of help out. You know, things get crazy in the world. Things are coming at you a million miles a minute. And then, you know, just to have somebody be like, hey, you know, let me help with this. Or, hey, did you do this yet? And then you know, mm-hmm. let me grab the ball here. Those little things just mean so much and they go so far. Like one of the things that we talked about earlier with the hot leads thing, Matt came up with that in the morning. It was, I think, Friday morning and it was probably 10 o'clock in the morning. And he's like, hey, could we, had a, we actually had got a question from an affiliate that asked about it. And he's like, I completely forgot about this mm-hmm. thing that we did last year with the hot leads. And I'm like, what's a hot lead? <laughs> and, you know, just having that other perspective of like, hey, and, you know, I'm in the middle of 15 other things because we're in the middle of a launch and having him, you know, all right, well, this is a focus that we need to get on. And then just having a team of, you know, a VA that was able to get the information really quick and knock out a bunch of them, just having a team and multiple people that help take care of a simple task just went so far. Didn't pull me away from anything, you know, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit, but I was still be able to stay on task and getting all the help. The importance of having a team is just really to get that support and to kind of help move things forward when sometimes it doesn't feel like it's moving as fast as it should be. Yeah, because this was your first big, big launch I mean, yeah. you've ever run. And <laughs> I mean, just so for some perspective, I mean, Jason joined our team this year. And then, you know, here in April of 2022, he's running, uh, you know, a multi-million dollar, one of the biggest affiliate launches of the entire calendar year. And it's like, I forget sometimes, like, because you're so good at what you do and you've progressed so much. that I just forget like, wow, he's actually really only worked with us for a few months. You know, it's like, he's still really new. And so he still needs some things, you know, you still need some lessons. And like, so just between us, like, and everybody else listening, of course, you know, like, don't hesitate to still ask me stuff because I forget sometimes, like, that you've only been on the team for, you know, just such a short time. But I say that to say that, yeah, that is the value of a team. I often say, like, you cannot have a one-person affiliate manager team once you pass a certain level. You know, that's why we started an agency this year. I hesitated. I resisted it for a decade to start an agency because I was just like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, that just basically what I was saying is only about two or three people a year are going to get access to me. And I mean, I can only help two or three businesses scale. I can only help two or three audiences, people to get exposed to those, you know, those products. And it was actually, it was last, about this time last year, this somebody just said, you know, that's a very selfish attitude. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? You know, I was like, no, I only, I was like, I kind of pride myself. I only work with two or three entrepreneurs a year. And he's like, well, that's a selfish attitude. You know, I'm like, well, what, is, what does that mean? He's like, there's 150, 500, 1,000 people out there that need your help. Maybe 500 is unrealistic, but do you think that maybe you could help 30 or 100 of them? Well, no, I only work with two or three, you know, and that's the way it is. And he's like, or you could start an agency and stop being so selfish. I was like, man, you don't really mince your, pull your punches there, do you? You know? And yeah, I mean, with us, you know, I mean, it's like, I have to remind people, there's me, there's your affiliate manager, there's multiple, you know, there's Valerie on our team, our client success specialist. There's, you know, at least one assistant. That's four people working on your stuff. Like I, I look at Ryan Levesque, for example, just today, We'll have me, Jim, Kevin, and Valerie touching their stuff, working on their stuff. On any given day, it might be all four of us plus Syed, plus even you, you know, inputting brain power into it. It could be six people in a given day or two that are touching that account. And there's so many benefits to that team. Even if you do it internally, if you don't hire us, that's fine, right? If you do want to hire us, like we should definitely have a conversation. Go to youraffiliatelaunchcoach.com and we'll talk about which options are best for you. You can possibly get coaching to help you that if you've got the team, or we might run the whole thing for you, like we do for Stu McLaren, Ryan Levesque, and, and others. There's a reason why we work with the best of the best, you know, it's because they trust us. There's also a reason why we do coaching for people like Jeff Walker's team and many others, because they've got the team. 
but they need a little bit of guidance that we can give from our experience. So either way, your affiliate launchcoach.com. I'll put that link in the show notes. So whether you do that, whether you hire us to do it or you do it on your own, if you do it on your own, don't expect to hire one person who just handles everything. Provide them with the resources. If it's you, don't do everything. At least hire an assistant. At least hire a virtual assistant. Somebody that like those hot lead. There's no way Jason could have gotten those out to all the affiliates over the course of a couple of hours while also responding to emails and Facebook comments and doing a phone call with an affiliate and responding to a DM and responding to you know a client about such and such. Sometimes it, like I get this feeling like people think that we're in multiple places at once because those emails, they're sent through the affiliate manager's name, right? So just side note, Jason didn't actually send any of those emails. Actually, I think those were sent in my name. I didn't send any of those emails, guys. I didn't download your list. I didn't go into Infusionsoft and take the three minutes it takes to run the stupid report, download the list, send it to you. That takes five minutes to do all that. One of those takes five minutes. That's 12 per hour. And we wanted to send as many of these. I think we sent like 40 of them. That's three, probably took about three. It's probably not 12 per hour. It's probably more like 15 per hour. So we sent like 40 of them. That's three hours of doing this while also doing all the other stuff. And it feels like we're in six places at once. And that's a pretty cool thing that you can get with a team. So if you do do it on your own, you got to have at least one affiliate manager and some sort of an assistant. It doesn't have to be a full-time assistant, but somebody that can help out with the, you know, some of that busy work. Things that need to be done. Otherwise, Jason had to choose between send hot leads, very important, clearly, and probably would have been the thing I would have had him do if it was only him, or reply to emails coming in from active affiliates who have important questions. Which one's he going to do? That's a bad choice to have to make. Instead, we got both. That's what we want. We got both. And to the affiliate, it just looks like we're really super efficient. <laughs> and amazingly, we're like that, that prototypical you know, thing that's got like the eight arms going like this, you know, and the phone on, you know, that's what we look like, but we're not, we just delegate well. So got a great team and I'm super proud of them. So Jason, man, uh, what a, what a cool experience, cool launch, tons of lessons that we learned both the hard way and by doing some stuff right. And uh, definitely set us up for a bright future with Stu and with all of our other clients. So Thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. This has been... I, I hope everybody has just found like a lot of value in this. So here, here's what I'll ask you guys to do. If you got value out of this, why don't you hit up Jason via email? His email is partners at mattmcwilliams.com. Just tell him thank you. Tell him, you know, maybe share a lesson that you got out of it, something that was important for you. Uh, just say thanks to Jason. Of course, if you have questions or comments or anything like that for me... You know, I always tell people, just, just text me. Just text me anytime. Uh, you can text me at, at 260-217-4619. So reach out to Jason, partners at mattmcwilliams.com. That's also the email you reach out if you're interested in being an affiliate for us, by the way. And I'm sure Jason would appreciate that email. But let them know. Let them know. Check out Your Affiliate Launch Coach, youraffiliatelaunchcoach.com. And uh, all that fun stuff, man. Thanks for doing this, but I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It was fun. I really appreciate that as well. Look forward to more of them. Absolutely. See you, brother. All right, take it easy. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows? Maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon.